My name is Gay Adegbalola, Gay Todd Adegbalola, born, raised, and still live in Fredericksburg, Virginia. My earliest days were on Amelia Street, two blocks from the so-called slave auction block. I presently live on Douglas Street, just a few more blocks away from the slave auction block. I have probably experienced it more than most of the visitors to Fredericksburg and most of those who now live in Fredericksburg uh, combined because I saw it just about every day of my youth and every day of my childhood. Recently, uh, there's been some upsetment around uh, the slave block, mainly because of the city council's actions and the action was to keep it in its place as opposed to moving it or removing it. I was not upset by the decision itself. I was simply upset because I do believe the voices of many black members of the community were ignored. The point is this, the slave lock indeed causes pain when you look at it, but a lot of people think it was just a regular auction that took place there. No, that was not the case. When slaves were sold, they were treated like animals. They looked in their mouths, the white slave owners looked in their mouths, looked at their teeth, looked at their backs and looked at their butts and looked up their butts. And with women, even felt their vaginas, felt their breasts, and then stole babies right from the breast. So a lot of blacks, when you look at the slave block, they don't just see a chunk of, of, of dirt that an auction took place on, a chunk of stone that an auction took place on. No, they see the whole history of what it meant to be bought by slave owners. Now, mind you now, blacks, when they came to this country also, they were experiencing all this treatment by people who looked differently and spoke differently. So I'm asking everyone to think about how it would feel, especially white people. Think about how it would feel if black hands were on your testicles and they were speaking a different language. How would it feel to see your family ripped apart? How would it feel to see a baby, your baby, ripped from its mother's breast and sold off down the river someplace? Now, every time I see the slave block, and I've seen it hundreds and hundreds of times. Every time I see the slave block, it fuels me to continue to fight injustice. A lot of blacks, however, don't want to experience this pain, or maybe they cannot experience this pain. And if we want to, we can go back a little further. How did they get to the slave block? Well, if you think back and walk on down the street a few more blocks to the Rappahannock River, slaves are brought over from Africa. Now, if you think about it, when a squirrel or a bird dies in your backyard, think about that stench. You know something is dead because the smell just permeates your house. Well, think about being in the bottom of a boat with other slaves who had died, who have gotten sick, who are experiencing uh, their menstrual cycles, all of this in the hole of a boat. And then you get out and you're shackled again by people who don't look like you, who don't talk like you. And you witness things that you've never witnessed in life. So again, a lot of people, a lot of blacks, when they see the slave block, they experience this again. For me, I look at that slave block and I say, yeah, gay, this can happen and it can happen again. I think what was particularly disturbing about Fredericksburg is that some of the people on council profess to be historians and I don't know how they were looking at history and not seeing the pain and not feeling the pain. Secondly, 
the council gave the people, the black people of Fredericksburg, two options. One, either vote to have it stay in its place, or two, to put it in a place like the Fredericksburg Museum, where they are creating a permanent exhibit on the working people of Fredericksburg. Working people of Fredericksburg. Does that sound like slavery? It sounds like slavery whitewashed, if you ask me. No one was given an option like moving it to her camp park, putting a fence around it, flowers around it, so that dogs can't piss on it, so that tourists can't photograph their children on it, so that people can't kick it and pretend that it's something awful, that they pretend that it's something that's not so awful as it really is. Again, with me, with Gaya Degbalola, it's fine to keep that block right there. And I will continue to look at it, and I will continue to see all that it stood for and all that it continues to stand for. For a lot of other black people, and those were the majority of the voices that I heard, they wanted it removed from the corner of William and Charles Street. They didn't want this block that has been so destructive to our being and so uh, used and as, a, as a symbol of ridicule. They didn't want this on the street corner of a main thoroughfare. So, I don't know. I don't know. It really makes me look at the city council because I don't think they really took a good look at history. And I simply ask, especially to the at-large delegates who are supposed to be representing the entire city, I just ask that you um, listen to the voices of marginalized people. Something else that happened was that we were asked to vote on computers. A lot of marginalized people don't have computers, but that didn't matter. And then we were quoted statistics like we were supposed to believe that the statistics weren't skewed. I have a computer. I didn't do it because I didn't really want the government seeing my answer in print. But now I have been charged to exhibit leadership and to state my mind. I know some blacks are even upset with me for saying what I think. I just want you to know that Charlie Fry did the best he could, and not one single white member of council supported him at all. I'm disappointed, I'm disappointed but I'm not surprised. Um, yeah, it's October the 12th, 2017. An addendum. I simply forgot to ask, add, here's another idea. Uh, move it to her camp park. I already suggested that as one option. Or maybe put it on Washington Avenue, somewhere near Kenmore, the home, the plantation of George Washington's sister. There are already memorials there. There are already statues on this wonderful mall in Fredericksburg. And let us keep in mind who built Kenmore. What a wonderful tribute. What a wonderful place for the slave block. And let us position it and glorify the strength of my black ancestors.